All right, it's time to do Scorpinox review. Oh, I'm so sorry. I grabbed the wrong one. My bad. Exile Prime here, back with another video, and today I'm going to be bringing Transformers Kingdom, War for Cybertron Trilogy, Predacon, Scorponok, and if you're new around here, please remember to subscribe to my channel, leave a like, and leave a comment. So, let's dive right into this review. So, we're going to start off with the box, and there's that nice box art. Beast Wars, basically, Scorponok, looks fantastic. Cyber B, being launched from his pincer, looks fantastic. There's his beast mode, Scorpion. Looks great. On the side of the box, here we have the box art for Kingdom. Looks fantastic. And the back of the box, it shows that he's going to get the missiles that he had, just like in Beast Wars. It's going to be 24 steps, Cyber B included, which is very awesome. So, that's going to be it for the box. So, let's take a look at Scorponok. And here we have Scorponok, and he looks fantastic in Beast Mode. It does its job. He's not more cartoonish like he is from Beast Wars. It's more like realistic looking for a scorpion face and the uh, pincer mouth and everything like that, I guess you would call it. But overall, it does its job for overall the look of it. The pincers do have the articulation to open and close, and they do show off like here's the missiles, and then here's the cyber beat, and you can take these out. It's just one of those five millimeter pegs, which is fantastic. And you can slot in almost anything in there, whatever you think of. And so on and so forth. Here's the missiles come right out. Just a little bit of hollowness, but hey, they do the job. And the rest of the scorpion does have articulation here for its legs, so to speak, but they kind of just sit there and he kind of just glides underneath with his stomach. Yes, that's his leg there, one of them, and then the other leg is tucked around under the scorpion tail, which is pretty good as well. The head, robot head here, is tucked underneath, and it's very bizarre that they decided to do that. It's one of those weird transformations. Um, it's very simple to, to do, but when I got this out of the box, my first reaction is, I'm thinking you gotta open the chest up and tuck his head in all the way, and I was like, no, that doesn't work. He just gets tucked in just like that, that little nudge, and then that's it. And then this is what he's going to look like from the front, front view with the scorpion head. So there's that. Here we have the Predacon logo right there on his shoulder, which you see that a little bit later in robot mode. So the tail is as follows. It just kind of just hangs here because it's locked up with the leg here, so... This is as much as, uh, articulation as you're going to get, but it does do this. The stinger itself can bend like this. But if you're looking for the, the tail actually coming forward and stinging forward like that, that's not going to happen. It doesn't have that type of articulation for that. But still a great figure. Great beast mode. An arachnid, I should say. And overall, like I said, it just glides basically on this leg. So when you're moving them, these legs don't need to do anything so the articulation also for his arms is as follows he can move his arm all the way out like this and go up and down and extend out like it would be for a regular arm but for a scorpion his pincers kind of just vary from like side to side just like that so there's that Overall, I think the beast mode is fantastic I think the articulation with the legs is a little bit lacking in that kind of department. I think that's a little bit cheapness like, but but the look of it though looks awesome. And we're just gonna start the transformation. So obviously what you're gonna do, you're gonna come back here, you're just gonna free this leg up. You're gonna come underneath, you're gonna free the other leg up and just bring this all out. This is all gonna unfold underneath like that. And what you want to do, you want to find out where that hinges right there with the leg and turn the leg and get the leg to kind of get straightened out with the crotch area for the robot mode and then bring this leg down as well. So this is on a, a double hinge right here. 
for these pieces to come up and lock in. So you just want to get the legs straightened out and get ready for what you're going to be doing. Next up, let's see. So we got the shoulders. I'm just going to nudge them a little bit, just like that. You're going to come back here. Just like that. What we're going to do, you're just going to fold the scorpion head in. Tuck that away. Then you're going to come over here. Spread these apart a little bit. Lift his head up. And just be careful. You don't want to scratch the sides of his face. You're going to bring this in. This is just going to set just like that. This is going to lift up just like that. His chest piece is going to stay open for a second because you're going to bring this up. Double hinge up. And there's going to be... Okay, let's see. Uh, these pieces back here. Right here. My fingers on. They're going to lock into in there. So you're going to bring them up. And it's going to click in. So there you go. Then you're going to close this up right here. You're going to move his extra legs out of the way just for a moment. Bring the shoulders down. And now you got a little bit of a scorpion action going here. But what you're going to do, the the back legs here for the scorpion mode, they can go any way you want. Um, instructions are, they give you a specific way. I just, um, just going to go ahead and just tuck these double legs right back behind here. And then I'm just going to bring these legs up behind here like that. And I'm just going to do that and just kind of tuck them away. You can do whatever way you want. This is just my personal opinion. Um, the way I want to do it. And just kind of nudge these there just like that that's kind of what i was more going for so at least you got some of the leg action going up and then you got the double leg that's on one peg kind of tucked away behind his back so you still get that articulation for the stinger and so on and so forth so so far it looks fantastic for a transformation and here we have scorpion and we're going to start from the head sculpt right here is very beast wars very accurate like I like the head sculpt it's very cool it's a full 360 on a ball joint and the cool thing is he can kind of look up a little bit so he can still look forward and a little bit up it's pretty cool the articulation like I said with his stinger he, you got a lot of range here with this thing um, so he can bring it all the way up he can kind of tilt it back he can probably tilt it down if you want I don't know why he would do that but you know, so there is that little gimmick. I feel as though this peg right here with this piece on, it's just a little loose, but yeah, that's a little minor detail there. Overall, his shoulder does have a full 360. You can extend his arm out. It's pretty good. It does have bicep and 90 degree bend at the elbow. It does have wrist articulation. His pincer hand, once I figure out where his elbow joint is, that's just very weird. Can obviously open and close like I showed earlier. That's the Cyber B. There's no launch mechanism, spring load, none of that kind of stuff. That'd be pretty cool if they did that. Um, but they did not. Turn his arm that way. That's the correct way. Then on the other side, he has his trademark missiles. He always been firing from his pincers in that hand or this hand, whichever you prefer to put them in. I wish it would have came with an extra set of missiles and an extra cyber bee, just for fun like that. Just to, so you get to customize like what you want to do with him. The articulation is as follows. He kicks forward, does have more than 90 degree bend at the knee. Looks fantastic. He can obviously do the splits, but due to this getting in the way, he's only going to be limited to about that much. That's not a big deal. Does have thigh swivel as well, full 360. Ankle articulation is busted, like awesome-like. There we go. Um, and you can turn his feet like that, except this one gets a little weird because of the transformation with the, the tail. So that, that foot's just going to be a slightly different, so you don't get that same articulation. My final thoughts on Transformers Kingdom, Scorponok. Honestly, he's fantastic. He brings the representation from Beast Wars into this figure. Hasbro done a great job on that. 
the articulation is as follows. The scorpion legs are kind of weak, lacking like. Um, the ball joint for for this is a little loose, but that's that's very minor. The cyber bee and missiles are a nice touch. The overall transformation seems a little lackluster in some ways, but I still like the fact that they were able to capture the beast mode and the robot mode and do a great job with it within the parameters of the budget that they had to make this figure possible. So I can't knock that too much. He's not a very popular character outside of Beast Wars that I know of. Um, he's still one of my favorite villains from Beast Wars Season 1. Um, sad to say that he didn't make it past that, really, besides dying in Season 2. Or, I mean, Season 1, sorry. The overall thing, though, with this figure, I think it's awesome. I think it's a great addition to try to complete the Beast Wars Season 1 Predacons, and I'm happy that they did this, and I hope even they make a repaint using this mold, I'd be happy to pick it up, whatever it would be, just an off character or never even heard of, I wouldn't care, I'd pick up another one. Um, I just wish they would have added an extra set of missiles and an extra cyber bee just for fun, so you get to play out different uh, scenarios through Beast Wars Season 1 uh, episodes. So, that would have been a nice touch. So, with that being said, thank you for watching. Thank you to all my subscribers up to this point, and I'll be bringing more Transformer content very soon.